How to create a mutant statistic in five easy steps. Step 1. Be enumerate. Enumeracy is the mathematical equivalent of illiteracy. It refers to difficulty grasping numbers and calculations. Members of the public might be enumerate, but often the people making claims about social problems are no better. They may misunderstand what a number means, how it was measured, and what sampling methods were used to create it. Step 2. Be committed to the cause. Enthusiasm for a cause can lead advocates to mangle a stat. Any big number will do, after all. It's a big problem, and we need to get the word out. Others sympathetic to the cause might hear these mangled stats, be impressed by them, and repeat them. Like a game of telephone, over time, the context gets lost and the stat can get even more mangled along the way. People in positions of authority can give added credibility to the mangled stat. Through widespread repetition, a mangled stat can become part of the facts about the issue that few think to question. For example, back in the 1990s, advocates seeking to raise awareness of eating disorders estimated that 150,000 American women were affected by anorexia, which could lead to death. Later advocates mangled this stat, saying that 150,000 women per year died from anorexia in the US. This was a dramatic, eye-catching stat, and considerably more than the actual number which was at the time about 70 per year. It was also about three times more than the total number of women in the US aged 15 to 44 who died for any reason. If you don't want to mangle a stat, it's worthwhile to know numbers like this. How many people of various demographics die every year from any cause? But most people don't know these statistics, so the impressive number is repeated. Step 3. Generalize. Take a number that applies to a specific group and apply it to some broader population that it may not represent. Numbers derived from observations of specific and possibly more highly affected populations can be generalized to the entire population. For instance, social workers tend to see families who experience high rates of certain problems. Indeed, it is often these problems that bring families to their attention in the first place. But generalizing the rates of problems they see in their practice to the experience of all families can be an instance of inappropriate generalization. Broad or inconsistent definitions can also distort statistics. When broad definitions of a crime are used, they can create large numbers. But this can obscure enormous variation in what's being counted. Changes in definitions and measurement strategies can also lead to rises, producing the impression that the problem is getting worse. Hate crime stats are a particularly notorious offender, being subject to enormous variation in terms of definition and measurement practices over time, as well as waves of encouragement for the public to report incidents, which can range from minor online interactions to physical violence. Step 4. Transform. A statistic describing something specific can be transformed to refer to something else. This happened in our anorexia example, where the number of people affected became the number of people who died. Something that begins as an estimate can be misunderstood and repeated as though it was an established fact, presumably based on good evidence. Some stats can be produced by making unwarranted leaps in logic. For example, Reporting of homicides often includes, at least at the time of reporting, unknown offenders. In the 1980s, advocates trying to raise awareness of serial killers made the logical leap that at least a large portion of homicides with unknown offenders might have been the work of serial killers. This produced estimates that were far too high, so that, for instance, individual serial killers would have to be responsible for 100 victims per year. But these produced impressive numbers and caught the attention of policymakers. Such large estimates meant that something had to be done. Step 5. Be confused. Sometimes very complex statistics can be mangled because people just don't understand them. A correct but difficult to understand stat can become an easily understood but wildly inaccurate one. One of the more well-known offenders is the risk ratio. Here's an example from the US-based campaign group Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. In the ad, a man is shown reaching for a plate of bacon rashers while an ominous church bell tolls. As he goes to eat the bacon, he trips and falls out an open window. An on-screen stat claims that two strips per day increases the risk of colorectal cancer by 18%. But what does that 18% mean? Does that mean you, individually, are 18% more likely to get colorectal cancer if you eat bacon? Is your poor breakfast choice the equivalent of throwing yourself out a window? At the time of this campaign in 2018, 
About 4.49% of men develop colorectal cancer. A few extra strips of bacon per day would raise that to 5.3%, so just under one more case per 100 people. That's still an avoidable rise, but it somehow sounds less scary than 18%, and never mind some of the dubious ways in which data is collected from dietary studies. But that's precisely why risk ratios are often used to communicate risk. They're a lot more impressive. So be enumerate, committed to the cause, use unwarranted generalizations, transform and confuse the meanings of complex stats, and you too can mangle statistics like a pro.